Thank you, Eric. Look, that's me. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for the opportunity to give a less than 10 minute presentation about uh, some of the uh, work we're doing. So my name is Edwin von Weingarten. I'm a professor in public health sciences. Uh, actually, it's my background. Um, I am also associate chair of public health sciences. And one of my roles in that, in that position is to oversee the administration of two PhD, four master programs, and seven certificates. And one of the things we're really spearheading at the moment is to get our masters of public health degree entirely online. So one of the reasons I'm here is, is because I took Eric's course um, and Lisa Brown's course over the summer. And the reason I took those courses was because if I'm asking my faculty to teach online, I better kind of you know, lead by example and at least get some education in how to do that. So um, I will say that I took their courses after I taught my own course online in the spring for the first time, after teaching that for about 14 years uh, in person. And I actually did it really the wrong way. I took about, I decided early January that I was going to do it online. And everyone who's taught online and is an expert is kind of closing their ears right now. <laughs> but it actually worked out OK. And, um, and that's, you know, it, I, but I've learned some lessons throughout the year of how to do things a little better. So I'm implementing that this coming semester. Um, so uh, in my course itself, uh, my course is called um, Field Methods in Epidemiology. It's a research methods course in public health. Uh, I have undergraduate students in there. I have uh, clinical fellows in there, PhD students, master students. So really a wide range, uh, which is a challenge when you do it in person. And you get that same challenge when you do it online, because different audiences have different preferences for the time of the course and the way you deliver the course, synchronous versus asynchronous, et cetera, and the kind of assignments that you, that you provide. But um, by and large, I think I've found a happy medium that everyone seems to be uh, happy with. Um, so as I said, I taught it for 14 years in person. Then I moved it online. Um, and the way I did it initially, it was really in-person online. So you know, the easiest way to convert this really in two, in, in two weeks <laughs> was to do a lot of synchronous sessions. So there were some things I was able to move online. Um, I had already, over the years, worked towards some sessions using online materials and using some of my own recordings. But a lot of the weeks were synchronous. Um, and then after Eric's course, I've actually changed the whole thing up. And most of it will be asynchronous with some synchronous sessions, which I feel still give you uh, some opportunity to connect with the students and for them to connect with you. Um, all right, so I, I think I said already. See, I didn't practice these. I put them up and then Eric said, can you do all this in 10 minutes? I'm like, sure. Um, but I'm not actually sticking to it. Um, the things that I learned from these two courses, um, you know, a lot of us faculty, including myself, teach without having learned how to teach. So even just taking these courses to understand some of the educational principles is actually awfully helpful. So you know, next time I look at course objectives of any course, I'm kind of thinking of a couple of things like Bloom's taxonomy. You know, probably straightforward. Everyone has heard of it in this room. I hadn't. <laughs> you know, I was kind of just winging things for 14 years. So now, and I think I did okay. You know, but but it's nice to actually put some real some real concepts behind the teaching. The other thing that's uh, particularly relevant for online teaching was this whole community of inquiry uh, principle that. I think this school uh, really uh, goes with as an underlying theoretical framework. And all of you have learned about this, so I don't have to go through it. One thing I'll mention is, is that when I started searching the literature for epidemiology online teaching, this is the model they're going with. So I have some references from my discipline that actually use this. And it was nice to read the paper say, hey, I actually know about all this stuff. So um, one of the nice things about taking these courses is um, you learn the underlying principles and actually design your course in the way that it's supposed to be designed. And then implement the things we've already done for so many years in kind of a reorganized, uh, restructured way. Um, so one of the things um, I actually like my faculty to do, so it was myself and then the director of the MPH program who took the course and then um, Someone who teaches a required force for the MPH program is, uh, also took the courses. And I'd like to have all our faculty take these courses over the years, kind of few at a time, so that once we're entirely online, we could actually say on our website, all of our faculty have actually been somewhat trained in doing this uh, appropriately. So 
Um, one of the things from these courses that really helped me a lot was putting this learning objectives table together, really thinking about, well, how do you, uh, what are your objectives of your courses? How will I actually assess these? And of course, you know, assessment is our most favorite topic. Um, but, you know, it's, so thinking about this ahead of time is, is certainly very helpful. And then how do I use my instructional activities and technology to actually get at these points? Um, so this is the detail table. I'm not going through the details here, but that was the detail table that, you know, we put together. And then secondly, from that, you put a, a, a course schedule together where you just show the objectives and the learning activities, which then copy and paste straight into Blackboard. Um, so a lot of the design work is outside of your learning management system. So if, God forbid, Blackboard goes away at some point, you should have all the materials together and you can just plop it into whatever new system we're, we're going to be using. Uh, but this, this has been really great and just an eye-opener for me to really design it in a way that, that meets my objectives um, and that links the activities with the technology and the assessments. Um, how many? Uh, I have like one minute. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so some basic lessons. Um, the second. Um, so I like synchronous sessions, even just a few. It's nice to be on video. Um, that said, you got to get people on video. Um, my course in the spring, I didn't have people on video, and I got the complaint that they didn't know each other. So you got to use video and ask people to use that. Um, Eric says vanilla is a delicious flavor. I say, you know, there's nothing wrong with the KISS principle, same thing. Uh, keep it simple, a clear, consistent across the course, and then maybe the next time you do this again, you just build on it and make things uh, maybe at least more exciting for you. Uh, maybe the students don't actually care if you make it more exciting, but, you know. Um, but keeping it simple and straightforward and just a similar structure across the 15 weeks is great. Um, and, you know, doing this online, it does take a heck of a lot of time to keep track of all of the discussion boards, assignments, voice threads, all of these different things. So as much as you can automate some of this, the better. Um, so I'm still kind of figuring out how to do that. Um, okay, um, so really my take home message is, um, you know, faculty that already know how to teach well, will do well regardless if they do it in person or online. So I, the, the faculty that have gotten lots of good evaluations over the years that do it online now, they're still getting good evaluations. So, you know, if I assume most of the people here, if not all of them, uh, are fantastic instructors. You'll be fine if you move it online. You know, you know what you're doing, you know the content, you know how to deliver it. You just kind of tweak it in a way to do it in a different uh, format. Um, and then the thing that I've really gotten out of this is I'm, I'm starting to prefer online educate, teaching a lot more than the in-person because there is no way to hide for students. So they got to contribute, they got to submit their assignments. Um, if they miss a lecture, they're not going to get away with it. Uh, so, you know, I think the, the quality of teaching and learning actually, I think, is going to be better in my course in the online version than in the in-person version. And I'll stop here.